Hi everybody, I'm Corinne Blackstone and welcome to my craft room. Before we get started, be sure that you are subscribed here on YouTube. It is totally free to subscribe and I would love to have you as part of my crafty family. Today's video, we are going to be talking about print and cut and making holographic stickers. This is something you guys always ask about and I have another video but it's super old so I wanted to make sure to update you and give you some new tips and tricks to making these and also I found a really good quality sticker paper from Hayes Paper and I absolutely love it. You can save 15% by using code Corinne at their website and I will link it down below so that you can grab this. This holographic paper is super high quality. I've used it a ton and I'm really, really happy with it. The holographic color is great. My ink works fantastic on it. I know a lot of people have said they have some problems with ink pooling on them and the ink never drying and I don't have that issue with this. I use an Epson inkjet printer and I've never had any issues with this so I'm really excited to show you how to do this. We're going to show you how to kind of fit everything on to your paper and this is an A4 size paper so I'm going to show you how to use an A4 paper with the new print and cut sizing and I'm going to show you some little caveats that Cricut kind of messes up with this new size setting. So let's head over to Cricut Design Space and get started. Whatever we would do, we do it just for fun. You only get so many trips around the sun. We're going to be using our Cricut Design Space to make these holographic stickers. So the first thing that I want to do, because my holographic paper is an A4 size, I'm going to go into my settings so you can click on the three lines over here and you want to go down to where it says settings. The next thing that I want to do is I'm going to go where it says load type right here and my print and cut size is what I need to change and you can see that A4 is that first option. We have other options but at this time that's the size of paper that I have is the 8.3 inch by 11.7 inch paper. I'm going to go ahead and click done. And then I'm going to upload the images that I want to use. So I'm going to click on upload and then I'm going to click upload image. From here, you can either browse for your image or because we're going to use several of these, we're going to just drag and drop them. I leave my folder open so that I can easily just drag and drop my image over into my design space. Now these are pretty large images, meaning they're really high quality, but they are going to load pretty big, so it might take a second. What you want to do from here is click complex and click continue. We don't need to do anything on this next page because this is a PNG with the background already removed and the offsets already there. These are ready to go stickers. So all I'm going to do is click apply and continue. Now I'm gonna do this same step for each of the stickers, so you, I won't show you all of them because it's all the exact same steps. From here, you wanna choose the print then cut image and then you wanna go ahead and click upload. Now, like I said, it's the same steps for every image, so I'm gonna go ahead and do these off camera, that way this video isn't 11 hours long and we can go ahead and get ready to actually get these all cut out. Once you have all the designs that you want to use in your recent uploads, you can just click on each item that you want to put into your design space canvas and click add to canvas. Now this might take a moment because these are going to load pretty large. Once all of our stickers have loaded, you're going to notice that they are really big. Don't worry, we're going to resize them. But while they're really large, I want to show you something that is super helpful, especially when you're doing print and cut, because there are these red little exclamation points right here, and those are super important. If you click on that, it's gonna tell you why that's there, which it says our image is too large. It's too large for our A4 paper, and it tells us what our uh, maximum sized print then cut area is. And with an A4 paper, it is 6.71 by 10.63. So that's important to know. So if you don't know that off the top of your head, you can write it down and what we're going to do first is I'm going to select all of our designs. So I'm just going to click select all and I'm just going to change all of their widths to five inches for now. That's going to just size everybody down much easier real quick and we'll resize them all again in just a minute. But before we do that, I'm going to go ahead and open up a template to use as our piece of paper. So what I'm going to do is use the shapes section and I'm just going to use a square. This is so simple. You can do this part completely for free and it's so helpful. Now what we want to do is in between where it says width and height, there's a little lock button. Click on that and it's going to open the lock, which means that we can change the scale of our square. So we know that we can print 6.71 
wide by 10.63 high. So that is going to be our piece of paper, our printable area on our A4 paper. Now what we can do from here is to size our stickers so that they're going to fit within our printable area. But you'll notice that our stickers go behind our square. This is a super easy fix. Just click on your square, you wanna um, right click on it and you wanna send it to the back. You'll notice over here in your layers panel that that square goes all the way down to the bottom. Now when you pull your stickers in, they go over your um, paper, over your square. Now what I'm gonna do is size these down so that I'm pretty happy with the sizing and so that I can fit quite a few of them on my piece of paper. Now they're not all gonna be sized exactly the same because you'll see like this one's very, very wide. So I'm probably gonna make him not quite as tall as the other one. Now you wanna leave a little bit of space between them. You don't have to leave a ton, but just a little bit of space between them is perfect. So all I'm gonna do is just hand size these. You can do this however you want, but I prefer to just kind of size them based on where I can fit them on my sticker paper. So again, we have some that are gonna be quite a bit wider than others and some that are definitely skinnier and taller. Now I like to try to fit as many as I can on here, even if I'm gonna just make some funny sized ones. I'm really okay with that, like some really small ones or some really big ones. It just kind of is up to you and the way you want them to be sized. Now what you'll see here is see how this guy's super tall and skinny? If I go really, really short on him, he only ends up being a little over an inch wide, which is kind of small. So I'm gonna make him about two inches wide and you'll see that he's gonna kind of be a little bit of an awkward size. So what I like to do is I'll put this little awkward size guy down here in the bottom and then I'll just do things like duplicating some of the bigger stickers and putting those in that one's place. Now I think I'm gonna make these guys a little bit bigger because the ones at the top are a smidge bigger. So I do kind of wanna try to fit as many larger size stickers as I can. So I'm just gonna go ahead and duplicate some and fit as many as I can. And let's say I wanna make a little bit smaller version of this guy. I can do that by just resizing it. I can duplicate this one and I can slide him right in like here. And it's really up to you. If you want a really neat sticker sheet, then absolutely line them up. If you don't mind them being a little bit messier, that's okay too. Fit them however you want to, but I'm just gonna fit quite a few on here because I think they're really cute. I don't know what I'm gonna do with them, but I just think they're darling, so we're gonna just make a bunch of them. So I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate these and just try to get a couple of each style in so that we can have a few different versions of the different stickers. So like you can see, if I made her really small, I could easily slide her in here and I can probably expand her a little bit more. And then with this little guy, if I just duplicate him and then I like rotate him 90 degrees so that he's laying on his side, and watch this, I bet you if I make him a little bit smaller, he'll fit really well right in this spot, right there. So you can see you can fit quite a few. Now I might need to kind of make him a little bit smaller, just a smidge, just so that he really does fit on the paper. But there we go, we've got our stickers all set to where we want them to be, and that just gives us a really easy to work with sticker sheet. Now I'm gonna go ahead and hide my square. It's important that you hide your square because then Design Space knows not to do anything with it, not to cut it, anything like that. I'm gonna select all of my stickers. And before I do anything else, I just wanna double check that it fits within our printable area. So right now we're at 6.625 by 10.63. So let's try and make this just a little bit bigger. Let's make this 10.62 and see if we can still fit it into our printable area, we can. That just gives us just a smidge of extra sticker, makes them just a little bit bigger. It's really up to you and how you wanna do it. The next thing that we're going to do is I'm actually going to attach all of these. Attaching tells Design Space not to move them around. You could use flatten as well, but for this one, I think we'll use attach just so you can see really what attach does. Now, one thing I'm gonna note to you is occasionally it will tell you that your sticker is too big. And you can see here that it is telling me that it's too large, even though we are within our printable area, but now it's telling me that the max size is that I can print is 10 inches wide. So that's one thing with the new Design Space updates that is not great, is it gives you these sizes that it claims that it can print within and then it actually can't. So you'll have to kind of play with it a little bit and figure out what it really will allow you to print. But by using that little red exclamation point, 
It's really gonna help you a ton. So now that we have this all set up, we're ready to go. I wanted to make sure that you save this before you do anything else because you don't wanna lose all the work that you did. So I'm just gonna call this hollow cacti and click save because we're gonna be using holographic sticker paper, which I'm so excited. You guys have wanted to know how to use the holographic sticker paper for a while. And this is a really fun, easy one to do. Now, all you have to do from here, once you've saved it, is click make it. And you're gonna see that it's gonna bring up our printable paper. So it's gonna show you what it's gonna look like. So you'll see here that you have some registration marks. They have changed from previous videos. So if you've watched older videos of mine, you'll notice that the registration is a giant box. Now all it is is these little corners, which saves you paper, saves you ink, all sorts of things. Now from here, what we're gonna do is click continue. It's going to give us the option now to send it to our printer. So I'm gonna go ahead and click send to printer and I'm gonna tell you all the things I do to make sure I get the best print for my projects. So for this, I wanna make sure that I use my inkjet printer, which is my Epson um, ET2720. And I wanna use my system dialog. Now you can leave the bleed on for this one or off because it has a white offset. It's not gonna make a difference. Whether it's on or off, you're not gonna notice it because it's not gonna be pushing any color out further from the edges of your sticker. I'll just leave it on for this because like I said, it really doesn't matter which way you do it. It just matters that, it doesn't matter whether you have bleed on or off. Now it is gonna take a second to open up your printer preferences, so just give it a minute. Once it opens your printer preferences, I want you to make sure you have your correct printer selected. So again, I need to go find my um, ET2720, and then I wanna click on the word preferences. From here, I need to change my document size from eight and a half by 11 to the A4 paper size. And then I wanna change right here for the paper type. I find that using the premium photo paper glossy works pretty well, but you'll wanna kind of play around with your printer to find out which works best. Some printers put out more ink than others and every printer is gonna be a little bit different. I then change my quality from standard to high. I make sure that color is selected. The next thing we need to do is we're going to go to more options. And from here, I wanna make sure that I turn off this high speed print option. It may also be listed as a bio-directional print depending on what printer you have. Go ahead and make sure that that is turned off Click OK, we're gonna load our holographic paper, get that printed out, and I'm gonna show you how to cut it on your Cricut. Our holographic stickers printed, they're so pretty on this haze paper. I'll link everything that we're using down below. What you wanna do when you're doing print and cut is you wanna put your stickers onto your mat the direction that they're showing. So I always load my mat backwards, if that makes sense, so the top's always facing me, because I put my mat under my door and then I just have to work with a little bit of my paper or my vinyl or whatever I'm putting on. Now you wanna line this up pretty straight to your mat and then you wanna make sure it's well stuck down. Now I'm gonna tell you right now, that isn't even close to straight and if that happens, that's okay, just take it back off. I didn't press it down very hard. And sometimes I find that using the long side of the mat gives me a straighter um, adhesion than using the top. Now you wanna make sure that it's well held down. I am using kind of a less sticky green mat now I'm gonna go ahead and load this into my Cricut, again, making sure that it's the same direction that it's showing in Design Space. Now I know you've got kind of a glare from the lights. I, I get a lot of questions every time I do this. Well, my Cricut doesn't read the holographic paper and I cannot tell you why mine never has a problem because it is incredibly bright in here. I have a ring light from above, a ring light in front, and a ring light behind, plus the regular lighting in this room. But if you are having issues with your Cricut reading your lines, you can use some matte scotch tape over the corners. You could also uh, put a little piece of scotch tape on your sensor. It needs to be matte scotch tape. You can also go over your lines with a Sharpie. Another option is to actually shine more light onto your paper. And one that I saw that I thought was a really cool option, they took some white paper and just taped it around the corners. I saw somebody also paint it, which was kind of a genius idea as well. It's just a matter of your Cricut, and some Cricuts don't love 
shiny paper they don't love different color paper but just keep trying some of the hacks tips and tricks and it will work i am cutting this on the medium cardstock setting which tends to work i want these to be completely die cut stickers so we'll cross our fingers that it works but we're gonna go ahead and let this cut out and then i'll show you what they look like I will say that there was a little bit of an oopsie on the bottom one down here. I'm not sure why exactly, but it happens from time to time. And I think I do need to recalibrate my machine. It's been a while and it's cutting very much that direction, but it's fine. I will have to calibrate it. Now it didn't cut all the way through. So because it didn't cut all the way through, what I'm going to do is not unload my mat. First thing I want to do is I'm going to pull my blade out really quick and just check it for any debris and gunk that might be on it because it definitely has a chunk of something on it. I'm gonna pull that off. Then we're gonna put the blade back in and we're not gonna unload our mat. I want you to just hit the Cricut button again. That's gonna allow it to cut in those same exact spaces. That way you're not like off center or anything. If you unload your mat, it's never gonna cut in the same place. So once it's done cutting that uh, second time, I'm gonna check that cut and now it's cut pretty well. It's probably got a few spots where it might still be stuck, but that's just, it happens. Again, I do need to calibrate. I'm so sad that I didn't before I cut these, but it's okay, whatever. That's one thing I will say. Um, I definitely need to remember to calibrate more often, especially after major updates. I haven't cut with this since they added the new print and cut size to the live version of Design Space, which is probably where my issues are coming from. I'm gonna go ahead and pop these off the mat so we can take a look at them. Even with the messy calibration, they're so darn cute. Look at how pretty these are with that holographic. Let me see if I can get it to focus for you. I might need to move the guys from behind it. So darn cute. That holographic is so pretty on these. And again, you can shop at Hayes Paper for these. I absolutely love how these came out. They're so cute, so pretty. And don't forget that you can always use code Corinne to save 15% over at Hayes Paper. They make some really high quality printable products like this. This holographic is so gorgeous. Really nice quality. The Cricut cuts it so well. I would say you could probably get away with cutting it on a heavy cardstock setting and it would probably cut through the first time, but I just love how these came out. Again, if you're having trouble cutting the holographic, let me know in the comments down below and I'll see if I can give you guys some more tips and tricks on how to get yours to work. I've never really had too much of an issue cutting any of my different types of products. So if you are having issues, I'd be happy to give you some tips and tricks and see if we can get you working. I hope you guys had so much fun with this video. I know I did. It was really fun to make these little stickers. I will link everything that we used down below. These are so darn cute. They came out so adorable. If you guys have any questions, by all means, leave those in the comments down below. And I hope you all have a wonderful day. And as always, happy crafting.